Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Faris and today I'm going to be going through how you guys can approach questions related to COVID-19 and the best ways to answer them. Make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to be going through a model question and answer so you guys can visualize what types of questions you might be asking in interviews. And before I get into the rest of the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could like, comment, subscribe and hit that notification bell down below to stay up to date with all the videos I make. So of course this year we've been hit with this, you know, massive pandemic called COVID-19 and it's affected many people's lives. It's definitely something I think that universities will ask you in your admissions this is both for medicine or dentistry so it'd make a lot of sense for you guys to have a bit of information about covid and have an idea of what types of questions universities might be asking you of course i have no idea what the universities are actually going to ask or if they're going to ask about covid at all but it's good to prepare for these types of questions just in case and it is a current event so it's something that you know is quite close to the healthcare field so it makes sense for it to be asked in like dental or medical interviews so covid19 is a disease caused by the virus sars-cov-2 sars-cov-2 is a type of coronavirus so if you're in your interview, refer to COVID-19 as just COVID-19, don't refer to it as coronavirus. That's because coronaviruses are a family of viruses that affect both humans and animals. So it wouldn't really be correct to refer to the pandemic this year as coronavirus because it doesn't really make sense. Because there have been coronaviruses in the past, it's not exclusive to this specific virus that we've had this year. I know I've said virus a lot there, but just to make things simple, in your interview just refer to it as COVID-19. So the next thing that you should know about COVID-19 are the symptoms. Now, this is something that I thought I'd cover because a lot of people have misconceptions and have, you know, misunderstandings about what the symptoms actually are. So the main three symptoms that are stated on the NHS website are a high temperature, a loss of taste or smell, or an altered sense of taste or smell, and a new or continuous cough. Of course, there are a load of other symptoms that come as a result of COVID. However, try to stick to those three because they're the ones stated on the NHS website, and you know, you just wanna be as safe as possible in the interview. And if you guys want to read up more on COVID and like the symptoms, etc., I'll leave some links down below to the World Health Organization website and to the NHS site that go through more info on COVID-19. And the last main thing I think you should know about COVID is how it's transmitted. So COVID obviously is a respiratory disease and the way it is transmitted is through droplet infection so this usually comes in the form of droplets of saliva or discharge from your nose and as a result of these droplets the virus can be spread quite easily in close proximity which is why we have these social distancing measures and with regards to some of the statistics you should know you should know that about 80% of those that have COVID-19 recover without needing hospital treatment about 15% become seriously ill and require oxygen and about 5% become critically ill and need intensive care again these statistics have been taken off of the World Health Organization website and if you guys want to double check them or we'll see if they've been updated by you know by the time you do your interviews you should definitely check the links down below now the next thing i think you should know when it comes to covid is how dentistry has changed as a result of it so there's things like increased levels of ppe which is personal protective equipment some really easy things to mention are things like ffp3 masks and visors that are worn in practices to help protect both the dentist and the patient this is because as a dentist you're always working in very close proximity with your patient so you need to ensure that you're protecting yourself and the patient and let's be honest you're working right in their mouth so if they have covid you know obviously i've said that it can be spread through the saliva and there's no other profession that's close to saliva than dentists which which sounds kind of disgusting, but this is what you're signing up for, so. The next thing I'd be aware of is things like AGPs. These are aerosol generating procedures. Now, before this year, I had no idea what an AGP was. I remember talking to one of my tutors as well, and he was like, you know, this is the first time I've ever heard of it. They're procedures that can result in the release of airborne particles. Obviously, as I mentioned before, the transmission of code is through droplets. So these AGPs can actually increase the range of the transmission. So it's something that needs to be taken note of and has been reduced in dental settings. And this has obviously caused a lot of complications for dentists because it means that they have to change the way they treat their patients and, you know, change the way that they provide treatment. On top of this, it provides some logistical problems because of the fact that now we have these things called fallow time. So so if you are going to do an AGP, between each AGP session, you need to have some downtime to ensure that the place is, you know, well ventilated and properly cleaned. Now there's a lot of information about AGPs and fallow times and how fallow times can be changed and, you know, this has caused a lot of confusion in the dental field. So I'd stress don't worry too much about understanding them fully, but be aware of what AGP and fallow times are. So just to summarize, AGPs are aerosol generating procedures and they're being reduced in the dental practice. And secondly, fallow time is the downtime between each AGP procedure that ensures that the place is well ventilated, properly cleaned than prepped for the next patient. Nowadays, there's more time that's needed between each patient because of COVID-19. And the last few things I thought I'd mention before I get into a question related to COVID are things like um, testing and vaccine. So with regards to testing, you should just know that testing is provided by the NHS for people that exhibit symptoms of COVID-19. These can usually be booked online and sometimes you can get an alert from the test and trace um, app that has been provided by the NHS. Um, this is usually when you've been in contact with someone that's had a positive COVID-19 test. And secondly, with regard to the vaccine, you should be constantly reading up of any new developments with the vaccine and things that are changing. Currently, the biggest 
biggest player in the vaccine game is the Pfizer and Biotech vaccine. And based on the current information relating to this vaccine, the first people in line for the vaccine will be care home workers and people that are in care homes, people above the age of 80, and healthcare and social workers. This is specific to England, by the way. So if you're applying to a university in Wales or Scotland, you should read up on their guidelines and they might have some slight differences when it comes to how they're administering the vaccine, testing, and other things. Oh, the last thing that I forgot to mention is to do with when symptoms show up. So you should be aware that there's a large range of time where COVID symptoms can be present. And this range is about one to 14 days. And this is why COVID has been quite a tricky disease because it doesn't always present instantly. So some people might have COVID and not show symptoms for a few days or even up to two weeks. And now that I've kind of gone through the content of what you should know for your COVID questions, I thought I'd do a practice question now so you guys can kind of see how I would answer a question and how you should structure your own answers if you get asked about COVID. So let me quickly get changed for the interview. Wait, no, this isn't right. Let me try that again. Okay. That's more like. I'm pretty sure this is actually, this is the suit jacket that I wore for my actual interviews. The rest of this, bit questionable. Uh, I'd also say to the guys, like, make sure that you've got like a nice tailored um, suit jacket or uh, just like a nice shirt, stuff like that, just to make sure that you just look good in your interviews. First impressions really do last, and it's quite important to come across as professional. So yeah, little tip there. Cool, enough of that. So let's get into the question. I'm gonna try and answer this as if I was actually answering this in an interview. So I'm gonna keep, try and keep it uncut as much as possible and um, just answer it as naturally as I can. I know a lot of you guys were saying you'd prefer me to actually answer it than just give like tips on the way to answer it. So let me know if you prefer this or you just want me to go back to the normal, you know, you should just say these things. So the question is, how has COVID-19 impacted dentistry? So I think COVID-19 has actually impacted dentistry in a variety of different ways. It's had a lot of negative effects, but it actually has had some positive as well. And I'm gonna be trying to evaluate these in my answer. So with regards to the negatives, I think that COVID has really, really impacted patients in that a lot of patients are unable to see the dentist as regularly as they'd like. Um, we'd like to recommend for patients to see their dentist every six months, but obviously during COVID, it's been really difficult to arrange any sort of appointments. Um, on top of this, patients that really need to see the dentist because of any emergencies might find it a lot harder to do so. And their only options are urgent dental care centers, but this isn't the same as being able to go to your local dentist when you please and at the leisure of your, you know, your timetable and your scheduling. So that is something to consider. On top of this, it might actually worsen a lot of patient anxiety when it comes to dentistry, especially when patients are now having to deal with a lot of these issues at home and not being able to get dental treatment quickly. They will become more worried about going to the dentist. They're going to be, get more worried about their dental health because they don't have a professional providing them information on what they need to be doing in order to you know, prevent any potential um, infection or diseases such as caries. Uh, on top of this, COVID has also affected dentists uh, in their practice. So there's been increased regulations when it comes to PPE, especially with a lot of um, dental treatment being quite close to the oral cavity, the spread of COVID is quite large. So dentists have had to adopt more rigorous PPE, things like FFP3 masks, which are more selective in the particles that they let in and out, um, have been adopted, and the use of face visors. So this is some. these are some changes that dentists have really had to adapt to and really had to um, deal with in these troubling times as well as having less patients. So this is something that you know can be seen as good because it means that a lot of dentists have had relieved stress, which is a common um, issue in dentistry. However, it also means that they've had less work, so it can leave some dentists in financially um, compromised positions and their practices can be a bit harder to run. Furthermore, when we look at dental practices, there has been a massive reduction in the number of AGPs. These are antigen, antigen? <laughs> aerosol generating procedures um, that, are, that were quite common um, in the pre COVID-19 times. However, due to the transmission of COVID being through droplet infection, these aerosol generating procedures have been deemed unsafe in a lot of practices. And in the practices that AGPs are still being carried out, um, dentists have to deal with another problem, which is actually fallow times. And these are the times between each AGP, whereby dentists need to, um, you know, leave enough time for the practice to be clean, ventilated, and give enough time between each patient to ensure that there is adequate infection control, which is key in dentistry. In addition to this, I also feel like there have been some negative impacts on dental students, especially because of the transition of COVID. It means that a lot of um, universities have had more online teaching and less practical teaching. And I feel like, especially for dentistry, um, practical hands-on teaching is very important because it's a very hands-on career. Um, and with teaching being reduced and clinical exposure being reduced, a lot of the dental students are suffering from this. And I feel like online teaching has been um, it still needs to catch up to this day and age because it can be quite hard for dental students to deal with this new style of teaching comparative to what they used to um, have with real life lectures and real life clinical uh, sessions. 
Um, however, there are some positives that have come out of COVID-19, things such as the shift of dentistry to more online um, methods. So now dentists have to triage with their patients, so they contact them via phone in order to deal with their different conditions. Um, there's more remote controlled dentistry, so using online resources and technology in order to keep up to date with dental uh, patients and the conditions that they may have. So this is a positive strain and a positive shift for dentistry. Um, in terms of its evolution that has been accelerated by COVID. On top of this, um, COVID-19 has also placed a greater stress on preventative care in dentistry because there's less ability for dentists to see their patients in real life. They've had to um, have more of an educational role uh, in terms of dealing with patient um, concerns. So educating them on how to prevent any sort of caries, for example, by um, regularly flushing, regularly flushing, <laughs> regularly brushing with fluoride toothpaste, using floss uh, alongside other um, pieces of advice. And this is something that's actually being stressed by the NHS to shift to less of this drill and fill culture and more of a preventative um, care method. So those are some of the main things that I'd want to mention with regards to COVID and how they've affected dentistry. Um, overall, I do feel like it has placed a lot of strain on a lot of people's lives, especially patients and dentists and students. However, there are some positives that have come up too, specifically with the um, acceleration in the um, technology related dentistry. So thank you very much for listening to my answer. So yeah, that's how I would answer that question. If I had to critique myself, I'd probably say that I spoke a bit fast. That's always been a problem of mine. I'm quite a fast speaker. So I'd probably just slow down a bit. And maybe I would have tried to introduce like something personal to myself. The way that I was going through the question, I didn't really think I gave myself much of an opportunity to do so. But if you can mention like any personal examples that you might have had with relation to dentistry. So you can say, for example, like some of your own anxieties when it comes to dental treatment, or um, maybe you needed dental treatment during this lockdown time, or you know someone that did and they were unable to do so. That could be something good. And if you don't have a personal example related to COVID and dentistry, don't worry, don't stress about it. If you can't mention it, it's not the end of the world. I still think my answer was fine without a personal example. And yeah, that's about it really. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I tried a different style where I actually like answered the question myself. So I hope that was a bit more useful for you guys. Um, if you like that more, let me know. Or if you like my old method where I just go through like the tips more, also tell me and I'll you know, revert to that if you'd like. And if you did enjoy the video, please do like, comment, subscribe and hit the notification bell down below. And make sure you follow my Instagram, my TikTok. I have them both linked down below in the description as well. And if you have any more questions to do with interviews and want any more advice or teaching, let me know in the comments down below or send me a DM on Instagram and I'll try and help you out as much as possible. Thank you for watching my video and I hope you enjoyed.